Good afternoon, kids. I haven't done a ministry minute in a while, and I feel like I need to say something. I hate to keep quiet sometimes with things, and um, this is what I got to say. I got to say that uh, this whole situation talked about yesterday. I prayed about it yesterday. Um, to watch your words, they like to ban you on this thing when you say the wrong words. But I just started to think about how every other post now is all about you know the head hunter, the witch hunt. And, you know, it's so sad when things like this happen. Some of the lives themselves are lit exits here prematurely. And uh, the things are starting to come to light. Terrible things are coming to light. And I was thinking about it the other day. You know, the argument, you know, the big argument of, uh, you know, someone who's got Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And then, unfortunately... They are alive of themselves, and, you know, the family says, oh, you know, they're in heaven there. Well, I struggle with that, and I'll tell you why I struggle with that. And, and I guess my hopes is not to cause division or derision. My hopes are that, you know, it takes a long time for someone to get to that point, okay? It takes a long time. You know, um, people who are struggling, especially people in abusive situations, just thing on top of thing on top of thing you know just stuff just keeps getting put on top of them and they finally they finally they finally collapse they finally break what I'm hoping is by giving my thought my opinion my insight into the what I've been thinking about since all of this has happened the past couple of days and I've talked about it months before you know about the unalive situation and and, and, and you know where God stands and where God's word or what God's word says and um you know, and, and then you, you know, you have the situation, you know, now coming to light, you know, mental abuse, that's, that's a, that's a tough one, you know, but I'm going to give my opinion based on what I've read. And, and, and I, I, the other day I was, I talked to a brother about it. I had sort of like a light come on and, you know, um, and, and I'm not doing this to upset anyone. I would rather, I, I'm doing this because I, I, I'm, I'm sharing my thoughts because I, I want to create doubt. I want to create doubt in the person's mind who's been thinking about it, who's got the plan, who's leading up to it, who, who's exhausted, who's ready to tap out. Because tapping out prematurely, you're playing God. That's the most important thing. I want you to remember that. You are playing God in that situation. If you're deciding to leave here, by your own hand, prematurely, you are playing God. Now, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. What I am trying to do is get you to think, to create some doubt, because it's permanent. What you're about to do is permanent. It, you, you can't, you can't, there's no do-overs, you know, and pastor said it. I said it the other day in my prayer that you can kill the body but you can't kill the pain. See, there's an inner man and an outer man, right? So the inner man is the man that, 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 that you know, intertwines with God's spirit. And the inner man moves on. Now, here's where I struggle. I struggle with the fact that the Ten Commandments, okay? The Ten Commandments consider God's law, right? Number six, thou shalt not unalive thyself, right, is what it says. And then it says Jesus came to take the power out of the law. And the law is only used to show you where you're going wrong, right? Once you receive Christ, you're good. That's what the churches tell you. You're golden, no worries. You do whatever you want, run wild. Da, 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 da. But it doesn't say that in the Bible at all in any way. <laughs> it does say that you're no longer under the curse of the law, the power of the law, but the law is supposed to be used to, 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 to help you see the error of your way so that you make changes and that you're not caught up in the old ways of doing things. So here's where I struggle. Christ dies on cross. We receive Christ. Sins are forgiven. Then it says that we're not perfect. We're all going to fall short, right? It says it in the good word. That's why Jesus had to come, because there's no way we could live in a, a holy life before God. That's why Christ had to come. That's why he spilled his blood. Okay. You receive Christ. You're supposed to make 360. That's what repentance means. That means you're supposed to turn from the old life and step into the new man, right? The old man passes away. The new man is born, right? Born again. Get it? Born again. 
You're supposed to live in the new. Now, here's where I struggle. We're the new man. We're not perfect. We're still going to sin. But what does it say? It says to go to Christ and to the Father for forgiveness of those sins. This is where I struggle. This was my first argument. And this is where it really troubled me. If the physical body is deceased, how can you ask for forgiveness? Right? Think about that now. I want you to really think about that. So if you've got a plan and you're, you're, you're contemplating this, I believe God's going to take this this video where it needs to go. It's going to, it's going to get into somebody's head. It's going to heart because I want to create doubt. And, and, and I want you to know what you're getting yourself into. You know, I think a lot of times we get so caught up in, in the circumstances around us that we, 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 we get blinded. That's what the enemy does that. He does that. He isolates. He blinds. He robs. He kills. He destroys. That's what he does. Okay? That's what the enemy of your soul does. Okay, and, and he'll do it through the hands of another person. He'll do it through an abuser. He'll do it through whatever way that he can. But I want you to really honestly think. Don't think about the circumstances. Don't think about it. It doesn't seem to be any end of the situation. It doesn't seem to be any possible way of anything getting better at all in any way. I don't want you to think about that, okay? Don't want you to think about that. What I want you to think about, what I want you to think about is, if I die in my sin and I can't ask for forgiveness, then where does my soul go? The word says you go to hell, right? So then I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty harsh, right? You know, so a family just lost their loved one, you know, to unaliving. And, and here you are, Mr. Mr. Religious Man, pointing fingers and condemning someone. No, I'm not. I'm just sharing my opinion and what I've read and what I've seen. And it's my hope that I can create some kind of a doubt in your thought, thinking, in your thinking process. And maybe bring some clarity to your situation in hopes that you cancel your plans and you decide to, 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 to forget about those plans. And, and 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 overcome whatever it is that you're facing because you know the sun always comes out after the rain it always does it doesn't rain constantly the sun always comes out remember that remember that now here's where I struggle right I said that you can't ask forgiveness to, for, for the, the, the physical body right the physical body's dead right now you can ask for forgiveness your soul leaves the body the inner man is out and loose and then the Lord hit me with this the other day and it kind of blew me away I'm running out of time. There's only a 10-minute limit here. Seven minutes in. Think about this. Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas, in the Bible, was called a son of perdition, which means a son of perdition is he went to hell. So let's think about it. He went to hell because he committed suicide, not because of the betrayal. Think about it, right? Betrayal isn't listed in the Ten Commandments, but suicide is, right? If he was an evil, vile man, then how could he follow Jesus through all of Jesus' ministry, right? He was like one of Jesus. He was an apostle. He was one of Jesus' right-hand man. So it doesn't talk about Judas' life being wicked or full of sin or full of all these horrible things. No. It talks about the one act of selling Jesus out for silver, right? The one act. Betrayed Jesus, right? He betrayed Jesus. And right after he betrayed Jesus, what got him? The shame, the guilt, the fear, the worry. Satan came right in like, like a flood, man. Came right in and started hitting him with all that just burdened him down with all of that with the guilt with the shame the fear the worry all of that kind of stuff he, he got angry he took the silver he threw it at the side he sees and he went and he hung himself that's exactly what he did right he unalived himself is what he did he unalived himself and immediately he went down so that's why i say what i say and i want you to be 170 billion percent sure that your, your, your plan, that your thought thinking, your thinking process is not a sugar-coated one. That's why this is a ministry minute and truth hurt. That's why I'm, I'm saying contains truth warning because I'm telling you or I'm trying to convince or I'm trying to get you to at least for a second, whoever you are, you know who you are. I'm trying to get you to, to just for a second open your mind and your heart and your, and your thoughts to what I'm saying. And then ask God. And then ask the Lord. I'm serious. Close your eyes and say, Lord, what I'm about to do, is this going to cost me everything? Is this going to cost me my soul? Because the hell that you're going to deal with there is nothing compared to the hell you're living in right now. And the sun will come out. It doesn't rain forever. The sun will come out. So please stop. Take a minute. Put your plans on hold. Talk to the Lord. There's a better way. Be encouraged. God bless.